Comparing lists is a daily necessity in Excel, but it often feels repetitive. Usually, you are looking for one of three outcomes, duplicates, items unique to list A, or items unique to list B. I am Nabil Murad, and in this tutorial, I'm taking list comparison to the next level. I will show you how to build a fully automated tool where you simply select your criteria from a drop-down list and a single cell function instantly does the heavy lifting. To make the data even easier to read, we'll apply conditional formatting to visually highlight our results. Let's dive into a real-world work situation and break down the logic step by step. In this worksheet, I have two lists, list A and list B. Some of the names are unique to list A, some of the names are duplicate in both lists, and some of the names are unique to list B. To clarify the comparison, I assigned some colors to the names. So the names in green are duplicates. They are available in list A and B, while the names in blue are unique to list A and the names in red are unique to list B. We need to create a functionality that extracts either the duplicates or the names unique to list A or those who are unique to list B. Let me show you the finished project. I have a drop list in cell D2. And because I'm selecting unique B, I get the names in red that are only available in list B. But if I switch to duplicates, then I get the names that are common between the two lists. And if I switch one more time to unique to list A, then I get the names that are only available in list A. Conditional formatting makes it easy to recognize the names we are extracting. Now let's understand the logic behind this functionality. If I want to extract the names in blue that are unique in list A, then the basic concept is to create a count if function. So I'm going to create a count if equal count if, and because I want the names unique to list A, then I start by selecting the names in list B, I type a comma, and then I select the names in list A, and then I close the bracket and I say equal to zero. When I hit enter, I get false and trues. The true correspond to the names in blue. If I include my county function in a filter function, then I'll be able to extract the names in blue. Let's now extract the duplicates. I create another county function. I select list B. I type a comma, I select list A, I close the bracket and I say if it's greater than zero. And when I hit enter, look at the trues and false. The green trues correspond to the names in green. These are the duplicates available in both lists. Finally, I want to extract the names that are unique to list B. Same exact concept, equal count if. And because I want the names unique to list B, then I start by selecting list A, comma, I select the names in list B, I close the bracket, and I say if they are equal to zero. When I hit enter, now I get it true only for the names that are unique to list B. Let's create an association. Whenever I'm looking for unique, I use equal zero. Whenever I'm looking for duplicates, I use greater than zero. If I want unique in list A, then my selection starts with B followed by A. If I want unique in list B, then I select list A followed by B. Now that you understand the concept, let's automate the functionality and put all the functions together in one single let function. In this worksheet, I have the same list of names and I have a drop list from which I can select unique A, unique B or duplicates. Whatever my selection, it doesn't make a difference to start, but note that I have conditional formatting, so when I select duplicates, it changes to green, and when I select unique A, it changes to blue. In cell D3, I start by creating a let function. I'm going to expand the formula bar, Control shift u and I start creating my let function, equal let, and the let function allows me to create variables and assign values to these variables. So I'm going to name list A, I'll name it A, comma, and this refers to the range from A3 down to A17. I then type a comma, 
And then I want to name list B. I will name it B, and then I type a comma, and B refers to the names from B3 down to B17. At any time, I want to refer to any one of these lists inside the let function, I can just use A and B. I then type a comma, and then I hit Alt-Enter to move to the next line. I want to create a switch function. The switch function will look at cell D2, which is my drop list, and accordingly, depending upon the value in D2, it will be selecting one of three functions. So I say switch, and the switch function will look at cell D2, and then comma, if D2 equals duplicates. So in double quotation, I type duplicates. Then in this case, I want to create a filter function. I type filter, I hit tab, my filter function will extract names from list A, and then comma, and I want to include the trues from the COUNTIF function. Then I type COUNTIF, I hit tab, B comma A, I close the bracket if it's greater than zero, and I close the bracket for the filter function. The second option for the switch function is to have unique A. So I type in double quotation unique A, I close the double quotation, I type a comma. In this case, I want the same exact filter function, so I can simply copy it, control C, and I can paste it, control V, and I change the greater than, and I type equal zero. I then type a comma, I can hit Alt Enter to move to the next line. And the third option for the switch function is to have unique B. Then in double quotation, I'll be typing unique B. I then type a comma. I want a filter function that filters list B. I can copy the same previous function and I paste it. But this time I want to filter list B. And because I want the unique from list B, then my count if function will be looking at A, comma B, if it's equal to zero. I close the bracket for the switch function, and then I close the bracket for my let function. By the way, I could have omitted the last condition unique B and only kept the third filter function, but I wanted to maintain the logic. When I hit enter, because I have unique A, then I get the names that are only available in list A, and if I switch to duplicates, then I get the names available in both lists, and if I switch to unique B, then I get the names available in list B. I have three conditional formatting rules in this range, and I'm going to write down the conditional formatting rules in the description below the video. By combining a dynamic function with a simple drop-down and conditional formatting, we have turned a tedious task into a professional automated tool. Practice this technique with your own data, and you will never look at list comparison the same way again. And if you found value in this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.